There she is. Another demon house. Another demon house. I gotta say, it does look as imposing in person as it does on a line. Are you gonna make it? Well, we'll see. I have a pocket Bible with me this time. Well, that's good. I didn't bring any holy water. Are you, are you concerned maybe you've gotten a little soft? Once you hear what this place is, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna see why I'm so scared of this joint. But I'm gonna keep this with me. I'm gonna keep this Bible here, back pocket at all times. If I need it, I'll use it. You, since you don't believe, you probably don't even need this, but if you want to use it later, you can do so. I don't, I don't need shit. Is that, there you go. This week on BuzzFeed and Solve, we investigate the Bel Air House in Bel Air, Ohio, as part of our ongoing investigation into the question, are ghosts real? As many viewers of this show know, I will only do one demonic investigation per season, so here's my sacrifice for this particular season. You sound brave, but your wide eyes betray you. It's the beginning of the night. I'm doing a good job of concealing how I truly feel right now. Uh, also, for the first time since the Sally House, we will attempt to sleep in a demonic uh, location. A little demon slumber party. I think this is a, a shot at redemption for me, and I'm not gonna wimp out. I'm gonna stay here all night. I'm gonna sleep where I have to sleep, and I'm gonna come out uh, a big boy. <laughs> You're gonna grow. <laughs> I'm gonna be. A, I'm He's gonna, gonna be a big boy. I'm gonna be a big boy now. Uh, Even if something horrifying happens. Yeah, my hands are sweating. Built in the early 1900s, supposedly by a coal miner named Jacob Hetherington, the Bel Air House from the outside looks like any ordinary home. Hetherington opened several mines over the years, and some claim that one of his coal mines sits under this house. Hetherington would pass away in 1904 and eventually, the house was said to have been passed to his granddaughter, Lyde. In 1947, Lyde would die of a heart attack, reportedly in the living room of the Bel Air house. Her brother, Edwin, was apparently so distraught that he contacted mediums to try and reconnect with his dead sister. It's said that Edwin's attempts to connect may have opened portals within the home. Right now, we're in the seance room. I mean, this is the room we were telling the story in, so. Yeah. This is said to be the place where Edwin would reach out to his dead sister, Lyde, and speaking of Lyde, she is said to have died right here of a heart attack. Unfortunate. Yes. So, I think we could sit down here and do a classic seance. We'll light a candle, and we'll reach out like Edwin would have done back in the day. Is there anybody here with us right now? We're calling out to Edwin, or Edwin specifically, or any of the Hetherington family. Is this all we do for a seance? Just light a candle, that's it? I'm, I'm not sure how. I've never done, I've conducted an official seance. I'm just doing essentially an EVP session with a candle on. Yeah, I was gonna say. You, you mean, There's probably you, some sort of decorum, right? Do you want me to look it up, the decorum? Decide on who you will be summoning. Let's go for Edwin. Right now we are trying to summon Edwin, Edwin. and or Lyde. Lyde. A happy place for her as she Okay, you don't... We're directly over where she... I know, but you don't need to bring that memory back up. Oh. Odds are maybe she doesn't know she's dead. Set the table. Place three candles or a number, a number divisible by three in the center and place an offering of food in the center as well. One is divisible by three. Just gonna get a it's third. So you get a fraction. Point three, 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 three. Sure, we'll call it that. Uh, we don't have any food, but... I got some gum. Oh yeah, put a, put a little Where'd stick. my gum go? Gather everyone around the table and hold hands to create a circle. Well, I, I gotta put this down. All right. Does it have to be around? It doesn't have to be around the candle. No, I'm just mean. Oh, like this? Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. Spirits of... Did you see oh, it? sorry. <laughs> Spirits of, of the, the past, move, move among us. us. Be, be guided, guided by the light, light of this world and visit upon, upon us. us. If you are with no, 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 that's oh, not that's a quote. That's, that's out of the, the quote. Rest of it. Cool. Yeah, that's Baller. it. Um, we we got to wait for a response now. Your hands are clammy. Yours are clammy. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think we could drop hands now. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make that. Very sweaty. Yeah, the yours were sweaty. Edwin lied. We're here in the house, we're friends. We're not here to hurt you, we just wanna to talk to you. So if you're here right now, 
feel free to say anything, make your presence known, you could move something. Am I, am I off-putting to you guys? I don't often respect a lot of you. Do you not like his vibe? I wouldn't blame you. Is anybody here with us right now? Could you blow this candle out? Okay, I think we're okay. I mean, I'm fine. We're downstairs. The more we move up, the more That's true. I'll get uneasy. That was me. That was my breath. Fucking Jesus Christ. Edwin would pass away himself in 1962. And after that, ownership of the house passed from owner to owner. Families that lived there only did so momentarily after strange activity in the house prompted them to leave. Eventually, the home sat abandoned. During this time, neighbors would claim to see activity within the seemingly vacant home, such as people moving about, peering out of the home's windows. Other than the deaths in the house, nobody knows why this seemingly normal home is ripe with activity. Some point to the notion that the house allegedly sits on a ley line, which are unseen lines connecting important physical slash spiritual markers for ancient cultures. Other people point to the fact that the land beneath the house sits adjacent to what the current owner claims are Native American burial caves. And finally, there's the possibility that past coal mine accidents contribute to the unrest. Either way, something is not right at the Bel Air house. Perhaps that's why it sat abandoned until Kristen Lee. After her previous home had been destroyed by flash floods, Kristen Lee understandably thought her luck had changed when she managed to buy the beautiful Bel Air home at a foreclosure sale for reportedly only $46,000. In 2005, Kristen Lee and her family moved into the Bel Air house, marveling at what was seemingly a steal. Soon after moving in, it became apparent why the house was abandoned. Lee would hear voices, things would disappear mysteriously, and she would hear footsteps in the attic. One night, while napping on the living room couch, Kristen claims she woke to a man standing in her living room. Terrified, Kristen watched as the man walked away and vanished before her eyes. Quote, I was not sure if I was dreaming, or had actually seen a ghost. I looked around the room, and everything was in its place. However, the room was freezing cold. I saw my breath, end quote. What was odd about him was I could see straight through him, and I could see through the foyer too, and he had a flat affect. There was no emotion, or there was no nothing on his face. It was just very flat. And to that point, had weird things been happening leading up to that, or was that the first encounter? For me, it was the first encounter because we were homeless. We were affected by two flash floods. So in my mind, I thought, this, this, this is probably because we're working too hard, we're adjusting to the house. So I kind of just let it go off to the side in the back of my mind. And that's where we left it. But it was very unexplainable at that point in time. And then later on, down the line, you know, years later, I finally understood that I wasn't just hired. We weren't just adjusting to the house, that it was a ghost. It was a full apparition of a man. So this is the living room. This is where Kristen was asleep on the couch where she encountered the gray man, the apparition in here that disappeared as he walked out. Did you hear that? It sounded like a little baby doll. Disappeared as he walked out, as he walked out. You heard that, right? Yeah, well, I got fucking chills. What the fuck was that? Like a little... Hey. Right. Um, is that you? Who was that? Could you do that again? I fucking hate this house already. Shut up. Kind of like that? Hetherington family, I'm Ryan, that's Shane. We're here in your house. We hear you're all very nice people. And, uh... We also hear that you have somebody in this house or something that may not be as nice. And maybe we could help you with that. So if you want to talk to us about it right now, if you want to say anything, just let us know. You could say something, you could move something. I heard it again. 
Is that you? Who is that? I, I heard nothing. Did you hear something? Footsteps up there. <laughs> no, listen, listen! Footsteps up there. Yeah, you go ahead and explain it away. At first, Kristen blamed stress and says of that time, quote, I thought I was just tired and questioned my sanity. I never believed in the paranormal because I'm a trained forensic mental health professional as well as a master level psychologist. I blamed psychology until there was no more psychological reasoning, end quote. What do you think about, because she, is, she was skeptical at first, as most people would be, or some people would be, um, you would probably be skeptical at first. She blamed it on stress of the move. Um, she didn't really believe what she was seeing. I mean, I, I feel like that checks your box of like the first thing you would do. That's admirable. It does, yeah. That's good, you know, I trust her. But the thing is like once that happens and then another experience happens that you can't explain away, then you could see when you- it's Starting to stack up. And, and that's when it becomes like frustrating because then it's like- uh, You know, it's tough with these things because I don't necessarily believe in it, but you know, listening to her story, she tells it with such conviction. I don't, I don't not believe her. I don't not believe that she experienced these things. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. I just don't believe the- Ghosts? E yeah. There's a part of your brain that you can't, there's a hurdle you can't jump over, that you literally cannot get over this one thing. Yes, there is a moat that separates fact from fiction in my brain. <laughs> and it, you have your very heart set in what your definition of fact is. As do I. Yeah, pro provable I am, things. Okay. All righty then. All right, moving. I mean, that's... <laughs> yeah, okay, I mean, I have my beliefs. You have your beliefs. Yeah, we'll we, just we, leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. Hey, that's the show, right? That's the show. Yeah. And though Kristen tried to ignore the signs, the encounters continued to escalate and get more violent in nature. The breaking point for Kristen was an incident involving her dog, Bella. Where was the point when you decided this this is what it is, it's actually a ghost. What I saw was actually what I saw. Well, this part is very supernatural. This is something that I still can't explain today. And I was upstairs. We had moved around so many different times, bedroom to bedroom. We were in the back bedroom. It was just my dog, Bella, and I, and everybody had gone out that night. And I was, it felt like paralysis. It really did. So of course I blamed psychology again. That's what I always blamed. And I couldn't, I couldn't move. And there was this dense, dark mass that was just floating toward me. And then it finally lifted Bella up because she was barking viciously again. She was on top of me. Her claws were going inside of my rib cage to where it actually hurt. And she was on top of me and I actually felt her breath in my face. And she lifted up, it lifted her up and it just slammed her up against the wall. And the... Yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to... Yeah, I'm, punch I'm in the sort face. of... I'm, <laughs> I'm not laughing at it, I'm right. sort of... Uh, you know, that's a crazy story. Yeah. Here's well, the thing. Welcome I, to the Blair House. <laughs> sorry, I laughed at you. It's, it's just, this is just what he does. This is where the infamous dog incident happened. So she was sleeping right here. She said her dog was next to her. Something came in the room. She felt paralyzed, you know, similar to sleep paralysis. But then, dog levitates and right into that wall. It's this window right here, seems where the, where the ley line hits. So, we're conceivably standing on the portal. She said her dog was often unnerved by shit that is on this room. So. A lot of scratches. Big dog. You know how fucking sick that is to throw a dog across a room like that? Yeah, you gotta be a real piece of shit. I don't know what kind of door is in here, or what perhaps threw that dog that one night, but whatever it is, is it here right now? Is there anything passing by right now? Just follow our voice. We just want to talk. We're just, you know, we're just two guys looking to make some conversation. Just a couple of dreamers. I'm gonna fire up the spirit box. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Is there anything in this room with us? What was that? 
Is there anything in this room with us? What was that? Who's here with us right now? Who is in this house? Is it one of the Heatheringtons? Or is it something else? Is there anybody else? Anybody here that was here before this house was built? Spaghetti? <laughs> Tell us your name. Apple Tater. Apple Tater? <laughs> Last chance. Who is in this house? That just sounded like a wailing. Waiting. Yeah, me too, bud. Okay. <laughs> Lee had to rent another apartment because she found the house unlivable and unsafe. However, Lee was still owner of the Bel Air house, and consequently, she made attempts to rent out the house. Unfortunately, her attempts were ultimately unsuccessful, as those who rented from her would move in and subsequently leave due to fear of the home. Lee claimed she even reached the point where she offered to sell the house to the village for the sum of one dollar, which was refused. One article states that locals were wise to the unsafe nature of the home. You're seeing where the frustration is starting to mount as all these measures are taken to be rid of this place. Yeah. And it just, for whatever reason, it's, it's like latched on like a parasite. It's a, it's a curse. Yeah, it's insane. I, I mean, I've read a lot of these stories. I haven't seen anything like this where someone is making so much concerted effort to get rid of something and they just can't seem to, it's like a, the worst version of a bad penny. It's like the house itself is an entity. Don't, what are you doing? What? I don't know. Why are you rubbing your hands together? Right? It's like the house itself is sort of. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, an entity. I'm just saying, regardless of whether or not you believe, it's easy to empathize with the situation or sympathize, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, you reached an agreement there. We did. Good. Should we high five or something or? Hell yeah. Didn't feel right. It was wrong. Yeah, no, not good. This would lead to the revelation of turning the house into a destination for paranormal investigators, which would save the house and perhaps lead to the answer that all who are interested in the paranormal strive to answer. Are ghosts real? But as promised in the intro, we're not here just for ghosts. We're also here to confront something that may not be human at all, which leads us to Emily Davis, the name Lee gave to the house's child spirit a small girl. Upon research, an Emily may have existed in connection with the house, but it's by no means definitive. However, based on our past experience in the Sally house, I learned that many times, demons or non-human entities will present themselves as something less formidable to trick those that encounter them. Sometimes, that can include appearing as a child. Emily is said to have made contact most often in the attic, and it's no surprise that the attic is where Lee feels the strongest sense of oppression. We're gonna go up to the attic later. We're gonna see what's up there. Great, all right. Um, Let's find ourselves a, a Emily lady. I hope not. <laughs> Emily Lee. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Little pigtail demon. Are these demons, are they big like hellish ghouls with just a little blonde wig on? Is that what we're talking about? No, I think it's an. They could accurately make themselves manifest in a form of a little, a little child. Yeah. I've said this to you before. They're not going to come out with the horns right away because no one's going to be like, oh, I want to be friends with that thing. But if you see a little girl throwing a ball to you, like, yeah, I'll play catch for a it's little bit. It's just weird you know? that they. Is it like a? Is it like a character creator in The Sims? Like they pick out a, a little pink frilly dress and they're like, mm, I don't like that one. Maybe, no. Maybe some overalls. No, no, that's not. <laughs> so, final phase. Yeah, I mean, it's the one I've been dreading the most. Yeah, well. One thing to note, yeah. there was a lock on the outside of the door. Always very fun. I guess you do that in case an old wily raccoon gets in there, right? You know what, at some point tonight, I'm gonna lock you in here. How? <laughs> you wouldn't dare. I would. Yeah, you probably would. Don't do it. Ooh, this is a big attic. It's said that you feel really oppressive energy up there. However, Emily is not the sole resident of the attic. According to Kristen, a boy fell to his death from a window in the attic, but Kristen believes the boy may have been pushed. By who, nobody can say for sure, 
but Christian seems to suggest that the entity referring to itself as Emily may be responsible. Apparently there was a survey named Gary who had a son that went right out this window, an event that almost repeated itself three times. Yeah, how many people are going through windows in this house? I guess I'm just realizing now that that seems to happen to many people. I mean, <laughs> it kind of tells you what kind of thing is up here, but it's not so much that uh, it's dragging them from another part of the room. They just, people who don't know the history of the house seem to just be drawn to this window, almost in a trance-like state. Also, I hear Emily likes to play piano. If you're a demon, walk through that door. Walk through whatever portal you have to to get into this room because we are two willing individuals. Don't, don't, don't include me in that. Huh? Yeah. No, you can walk in the room, just don't go inside me, you know? By the way, if we hear that go off while we're sleeping, I'm gonna lose my fucking- Yeah, you're gonna poop your pants. Brace yourself. Wow, that was a loud one. So if anyone wants to say anything, now is the time to do so. Who's up here? Emily, if you're here, say something. Emily, is that you? What the fuck, what is it sound like? Emily! If you're trying to make us go to sleep and feel safe so you can start fucking with us when we're asleep, pretty uncool. Turning it off. I can't believe after all you've done, you're not gonna show yourself right now. You're not gonna say anything. Not even show us you're here. Just make a little knocking noise. One of these. We hear you walking around up here. All right, we'll be back. And I'm coming with my bed. Gonna turn this into my rumpus room. Unfortunately, we now enter the final phase of our investigation, sleeping in the house. So, getting ready for the night, Shane's all mummified. We also have uh, Emily's little piano. Let's try and get some sleep. Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. I am kind of hungry though. Um, I have some goldfish. You just brushed your teeth. It's what, if, what if we ordered a pizza though? How you, how's it going? You got that? I got this. I'll sign this right here. Uh, so it's. Oh shit, what's that total? Thank there you so much. Off. Thank you. Have, Have a good, good one. Mmm. That does look pretty good. That actually. does look very good. That's some chunky dough. Jesus, you're tearing through that. It's good. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to go to sleep now, so. Uh, Whatever is up here, hopefully you don't fuck with us. Do know that there is a camera right over there, so. So, you sure, you're welcome. You're welcome to, to try. To fuck around with the boys, but please know this, once you do, the whole world's gonna know. Alrighty. Oh, another overnight in the books. Yeah! Oh, time to pack up. Get the fuck out of here. Do you believe me now when I say that maybe we're both demon proof? We're not demon proof. I think we might be. I think we caught a demon in a slumber. It's been a lovely stay in this quiet, quiet, uneventful house. Well, demon. Oh, he's you, getting cocky. You thought you had me in your clutches. Aha. But not today, demon. Not yeah, today. that's good. I'm done with this place. Deuces, demon. I'm mobile. The house is cleansed. Yeah, get that, that, that wasn't yeah, as triumphant not, as I not like. Not cool. Take a last look at it. You're never gonna see it again. After spending the night at the Bel Air house, our sense of what resides there is no clearer than before. But the house's history of scaring away residents, including Kristen Lee, is enough to approach the house with caution. Is there actually a demon infesting a home full of spirits? No one can say for certain. And for now, whether or not the Bel Air house is definitively haunted will remain unsolved.